I'm working on this painting right now. I'm working on this painting right now and I wanted to just show you a little bit of kind of this middle stage at where I'm at. And um, yeah, it's a middle stage. It's also going to be a final stage. I really want to ha finish this painting with a sense of this kind of looseness and um, just hinted at shapes and suggested layers. And so I know a lot of uh, people send me emails talking about struggling in those middle stages. And so I thought I would just uh, share what I'm what I'm doing my approach to this middle stage so that you can uh, maybe apply some of it to your own painting practice. So I had a loose first layer, everything was hinted and suggested and not a lot of edges except for this uh, lower part of the painting which I knew I wanted to leave um, kind of undone like this um, and leave that white space. In the top part I was thinking about trees and really wanting to hint at the trunks. Often I get tangled up trying to depict all the branches and I wanted to I, and often I make the tree trunk very, very strong and I really wanted to hold back from um, defining it too intently. So there's tree shapes here that might be, this might be the tree, this might be the background, it's really hard to tell. And I'm just gonna uh, continue to move that way with this sense of um, kind of everything as, it's almost as everything as one shape. And so what I've been doing is I've just been working with the same colors I started with. Um, this is a cool gray from Daniel Smith, uh, Joseph Zvukvik's cool gray. And I'll create an edge like I just did here with my brush. And then I can use a little water and start to release that edge. I, what I'm thinking about doing is melting this new brush stroke into the rest of the painting so that it's really hard to tell when anything in this painting happened. As I'm doing that, I'm focusing on that one brush stroke as well. When I sprayed it with water, I can actually see a little trickle of pigment kind of following this water channel. And I'm gonna respond to that and draw it down towards the um, foliage at the bottom of the page. So um, I'm making a mark. I'm softening that mark with a spray bottle. Sometimes I'll do it with a wet brush. And then I'm noticing what that mark wants to do um, what that paint wants to do once it's kind of released like that and I'm working alongside of it. So it just becomes about bringing that one brush stroke into fitting into the rest of the painting. Once that's placed, maybe I want to try blending it a little bit more and one way I do that is with a little spatter. Um, this dagger striper brush gives me a really fine spatter and I was actually thinking since I'm not really going to be painting branches Maybe I want to, the, the word vigorous popped into my mind. Maybe I want to be vigorous in how I apply that spatter to my paper. And I really whacked it there. Um, and maybe I even want to bring my brush close enough that the little um, brush hairs actually touch the paper. And that gives me a branch. So right there, uh, that's kind of magical. I'm liking it. And yet I'm going to continue with my method and just throw a couple drops of water on it with my spray bottle. I like this bottle because it doesn't just mist uh, when I squeeze hard, but if I squeeze lightly, I get just a few droplets on the page and sometimes that's really all I need. Um, continuing on, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Just find an edge and um, I'm doing this slowly. It's, it's a time consuming process. It doesn't necessarily, um, happen it doesn't happen nearly as quickly as the first layer and I think we get this idea that since the first layer happened so fast maybe we have um, maybe we maybe everything's gonna go fast but this is the part that goes, moves a little more slowly and it does that because one for one reason is because I'm slowing down I want to really um, have a, an intuitive sense of what's next and in order for my intuition to activate I need to um, slow down so I can notice what my what my intuition is saying. And um, just letting that drop of water kind of move. It's stopping here, there's a little dry spot and I'm debating how I want to release that. Just seeing what I have for brushes here. I'm gonna pull it with this little scruffy brush and make a, a rough, softened edge. 
Um, you might notice as I move my brushes here that I have not cleaned my brushes. And in fact, I was surprised this morning with a dirty brush when I first went to start painting tree branches and it turned out to be a good thing. Um, so I know I have paint on this brush. Let's use it next and create an edge um, again. Um, I'm debating, I, I kind of like the idea of keeping things quite soft over here and having maybe more of my edges and definition on this side. And um, looking at my painting through the computer screen helps me to see where my darkest darks are and where maybe I might want to place a darkest dark. And I'm doing this because I'm releasing edges, I'm gonna place a strong dark shape right now just mashing the brush down a little bit. It's kind of giving a, a rough edge, um, a little hint of dry brush. And that's a strong edge, even though it's rough, it's not a smooth edge. I think sometimes when you think about edges, you might be thinking about a straight line. Edges do not have to be a straight line. <laughs> um, you know, even spatter, spatter are edges. Uh, the, all those little round dots and the path they create, it's kind of a dot to dot, but it's still edges. I'm going to mist, moving in really close to get uh, that water kind of trickling down the page. And I think I'll take a clean brush with a little water on it so I can maybe pull some of that um, pathway of water down. And then here where it's going to want to puddle and go dark in this area, uh, I can use uh, a thirsty brush to lift so it doesn't just make a big dark shape at the bottom which is, I, I want my darks to be up here that's really beautiful and um, I I'm debating whether I should release some of that shape and let some of that dark flow this direction I think I'm gonna leave it though um, but you know what would be really pretty is a little touch of some of my um, foliage color down there I've got a um, transparent red oxide from M. Graham and <laughs> I'm going to spatter it and there's oh that's beautiful oh yeah and then I'm going to touch some in where it's quite moist here it's going to chase that water and really give me oh, such a beautiful warmth into that cool gray wash really really beautiful um, I've got little hints of all of my foliage colors up here. Um, that gray is my is my most dominant. It covers the biggest surface area, but it's these colors that are going to make the painting um, help make the painting dance and bring some vibrance in. And this is the dance. It's moving slowly enough that I don't outrun my intuition. I think that's probably the biggest challenge for most of us is um, just keeping that sympathy for your subject. I'm uh, really connected to this subject because it is um, exactly what I saw on my walk uh, yesterday or the day before. It was overcast and the colors were very, very neutral um, in the trees. The trees were much grayer than I usually think of them being. Um, the tree trunks themselves were darker than I expected. And uh, I just, I, I made me want to come home and just play with those um, dark, gloomy grays and the soft kind of neutral palette of the foliage. It was neutral and yet it still had, it, it, the color was that much more beautiful because of how kind of devoid of color the rest of the landscape was. So as this has been flowing, I'm getting a watermark being created along this edge here. I'm gonna let that, let that exist and just bring in maybe a tree branch over here to kind of break up that watermark shape. More flicking of spatter and a little more water to release shape. How fortunate we are to be able to work in such a beautiful medium as watercolor, one that does so much of the work for us. If I don't touch this painting ever again and decide to call it finished right here, 
uh, it's already beautiful. And uh, I think that needs to be a warning to me to really take this stage of the painting and be restrained in what I place on the paper at this point. Um, let's, let's enhance what's already there rather than trying to, um, I don't know, make big changes or make even to make it more at this point. I think it's, um, it's so much, so much beauty right now. There is a little bit of purple that I'm going to throw down. I love this manganese violet made by Schmincke. And so I'm going to dot that in. And the other color I've been using, and I want to mention it because um, I'm each, each color I'm using today is a different brand. I've got Daniel Smith's um, Joseph Zbukvik's Cool Gray. I've got Schmincke's Manganese Violet. I've got M. Graham's uh, Transparent Red Oxide. And I've got Rockwell's Magic Wizard, which is forming this kind of yellow. It's a yellow, it's almost a yellow green, but it's also kind of a reddish brown. It's many colors. So the kind of vibrant orangey color here is from M. Graham. And then the one that is kind of a little more neutral. I don't know if that's the right phrase. It's down here, it's also up here. Um, it's a rust, it's a yellow, and uh, that's the Magic Wizard um, line at this stage. It might, you know, I, I love line. I think I'm gonna just add a tiny bit. I have a little bit of spatter here that got quite dominant. We're gonna let it bleed a little bit. Made a dot, rinse that away a little bit. There we go. Didn't have to touch it to rinse it. Just uh, added some water to dilute that shape. A little light touch with the paper towel, very, very light, just to keep it from pooling there. Okay, I really need to make a stopping place for this right now, trusting that um, the time I've invested here is um, enriching the painting. I don't want to get to the point where I'm starting to lose uh, my connection to the environment that I'm trying to paint and my intuition, my sense of what the painting needs generally doesn't last a long time, um, maybe 30 minutes, and then I need to take a break and let the painting kind of reveal itself to me again uh, because it's changed. It's a new, it's a new painting. It's different than when I started this morning and uh, I would need to get to know it. I, I need, and I need to get to know it just the way it is right now. Uh, might be that I'm very satisfied with it and I get to call it finished and that would be a wonderful thing. <clears throat> 